This video is a continuation of our trust design. If you haven't seen part one yet, go back and watch the previous video to understand how we define the depth of our trust. And as we know, ideal trusses are subjected only to axial loads. Therefore, today we're going to find the compression and tension loads and design the members accordingly. We will now design the truss for strength or ultimate limit state design, ULS. If we make each bay one meter long, and each bay is the a bay is the distance between each node of the truss. Okay, I'll call this distance B, and that's equal to one meter. We know that the span is 30 meters long, and the depth of the truss is 1.7 meters. And now let's imagine this truss is a simply supported beam. And to find the reactions of a simply supported beam, we multiply the loading by the span and divide by two. That's just a, just the formula for a simply supported beam with linear distributed loads. Our support support reaction works out to be 218.25 kilonewtons. Now let's design our diagonal member. To do so, we need to know the angle between the bottom cord and the diagonal, and we're going to call it theta. So tangent of theta is equal or theta, theta, yeah. <laughs> it's equal to the depth of the truss divided by the bay length. So that's 1.7 divided by 1, works out to be 1.039. MATCAD works in radians. So if you want to know the angle in degrees, you multiply that by 180 divided by pi. This is equivalent to 59 degrees. So a little bit of trigonometry now. Sine of theta is equal to the vertical force divided by the diagonal force. So the diagonal force equals to the vertical reaction divided by sine theta. And Fd works out to be 253.21 kilonewtons. So the cos theta is the base divided by, by the hypotenuse. Therefore, the horizontal force Fx is equal to Fd cos theta. And that's equal to 128.38 kilonewtons. Let's have a look at this joint here. If, if we have a reaction pointing up to maintain static equilibrium, we need the vertical component of FD pointing down. Okay, so that means FD is compressing that joint, and therefore the diagonal member needs to be designed for compression. So in other words, we have to ensure the diagonal will not buckle. Okay. So we know that FD is 253 kilonewtons. So let's check it for compression. According to our friend Pythagoras, the length of the diagonal member is equal to 1.97 meters. There we go. So since the diagonal is not restrained in any axis, we check the capacity of the PFC in its weak axis Y. Okay, so I'll give you a demonstration here, just to make sure you understand the concept of buckling. So imagine this is the PFC, you have the Y axis and the X axis. So if I compress the PFC, it's gonna buckle. It's gonna buckle towards its minor axis, which is the Y axis, right? So it's buckling this way here. Oops, <laughs> this is the compression in the minor axis. So the capacity of a two meters long 250 PFC for buckling in its minor axis Y is 771 kilonewtons, which is substantially higher than 253 kilonewtons. That means we can optimize this design and maybe choose a smaller section. But remember, we're treating this truss as a simply supported beam. Therefore, we know that the maximum bending moment is at mid span. Okay, so you know that bending moment causes push and pull or compression and tension. And that's why we have to analyze the axial forces where the bending moment is at its highest, because there is where, where we're going to get the highest compression and tension as well. So bending moment M is equal to load times span squared divided by eight, and that's equal to 
1637 kilonewtons meters. <clears throat> so moment is equal to force times distance. Therefore, force is equal to moment divided by distance. The push-pull force is equal to 962.8 kilonewtons. So in this example, we're dealing only with dead loads and live loads. So that means bending moment will cause compression at the top and tension in the bottom cord. <clears throat> in real life, you also have um, wind uplift, which will cause compression at the bottom and tension at the top. So just make sure you remember that when you're doing your design um, in, in real life, okay? The top cord PFC is restrained by the truss itself, so it will not buckle about its minor axis. The length of the member for buckling about its major axis is the full span of the truss unless we restrain it and obviously we will have to restrain it otherwise you will have to find a section with enough capacity to go 30 meters long without buckling good luck with that so let's get the ruler again and do another demonstration here what i'm trying to say is i just said that the top cord pfc is restrained by the truss itself so it will not buckle about its its minor axis right it's not going to do this because you have the vertical members of the truss here so it cannot do that because it's restrained by all the vertical members so the only way this top cord can buckle is um, about its major axis which is the, the bigger axis here I cannot even buckle that because it's it's quite strong but imagine that that force could buckle the top cord so we need restraints here at the top cord so it will not buckle in any direction okay okay so 962.8 kilonewtons for a 250 pfc the effective length is between four and five meters therefore let's install restraints at 4.5 meters install restraints at 4.5 meters Okay, so here are the instructions for you to remember. You can use struts to restrain the top cord and don't forget to connect those struts to the roof bracing. And finally, we quickly check the bottom cord for tension and we can see that a 250 PFC with no holes because it's going to be welded can take 1220 kilonewtons which is higher than 962.8 therefore we are okay so there we go now you know how to design a truss in less than 10 meters if you have any questions just leave a comment below also leave a comment below if you'd like me to model this same truss in robot and compare the results and i'll see you next time